Now, I'm someone who really enjoys to uh, listen to music and uh, because CDs are getting more and more obsolete and we are getting more and more into the uh, digital music with MP3s and the AAC format and so on, there are tons of formats for music out there. Um, what I have is in my uh, stereo setup, I have got a computer. Now, um, this case actually is uh, from an old um, CD player. You could mount, you could insert five CDs at once. It was quite cool, but the problem was, yeah, um, the CD player was defective, and um, I couldn't repair it because it turned out that the original transformer was uh, had blown, and yeah. Also, this device is over uh, 20 years old, uh, so was, because the computer in it is actually fairly new. And, yeah, well, I would have repaired it, but hmm, the problem was the uh, name of the transformer. It actually had a name. It was called Yoda. Now, have fun finding uh, that. Because you won't. You will just find... Uh, the Star Wars movie and the character you order for that. So, yeah. So I decided, okay, well, the case was quite nice. So I kept it and put the computer in there and it fit in there perfectly. As you can see, there's the power supply, there's the graphics card, there you can see the hard disk drive. I've even added an view meter, which I have from an old uh, tape deck. And I hooked that up to the uh, audio outputs where you would normally hook your headphones up. Uh, yeah. Up here we have a big fan, two more fans in the front, and the uh, CPU cooler up there. And if we take a look underneath the stereo, there's an intake for a fan, and there's another intake. Meaning that air will get sucked in through the stereo, that's the cool thing about it. It will even cool the stereo because, as you can see, there are again intakes on the top of the stereo, intakes on the bottom. So we'll suck the air through uh, the top of the stereo and to the bottom, and even cool the stereo down, which is quite nice. And these two fans, well, yeah, they are just in the front to cool the motherboard, and the big fan there cools actually everything: the power supply the hard disk and the graphics card. And basically the air goes in through the top and the front and comes out here in the front. Now um, to not make a giant noise or something like that, I've got a small switch here and you can select the speed. And how I did that, if we take a look around here, if I can get my camera in there. I can't, but behind that fan there is there's a 5 volt regulator, and if that is switched on, the fans will only get 5 volts and spin a lot slower and be a lot more quiet. And if for some reason you think the system is getting too hot, just press the button and they will spin a lot faster. Now the problem is I could not reuse the front uh, panel of the original CD player, but yeah, also, where are you going to find a panel like that? Hmm. Now if you're wondering what that noise is in the background, um, now this is actually pretty cool. I recently got a MakerBot Replicator 2, and I'm printing two panels, which will go here in the front. One is already finished, which is this one. This is the one for the uh, where the, the uh, air comes out. That's why it's got all those uh, slots in there. And of course, a small cutter for the VO meter. Took me about half an hour to design this. And yeah, it turns out to be absolutely perfect. And by the way, the printer is set to uh, 2 microns. So yeah. It looks a little bit bent, but that's uh, just this is what's happened to really take that off the bill plate. But uh, if I want that in there, I'll of course secure it with hot glue. And yeah. And the 
panel that's being printed. That's the panel which will be mounted on uh, top of the fans. And yeah. Also design a small put some text in there. Here for the power button. And if you take a look at here, there the printer goes. You can see it says fan speed. Which of course refers to that button. And I'm also going to show you the 3D models I made with uh, the program called the program Autodesk 123 3D, which is a free software. But of course you've got to sign up, and I, they also offer you a ton of builds you can um, download and modify. Of course, the uh, free version it just allows you to download 10, but of course you can download other stuff from the maker, but Thingiverse and import them because the program itself, yeah, it's just about downloading from the Autodesk website and the software is installed on your computer. And you can of course design all kinds of stuff and modify it. For example, I've created, um, this is what I've downloaded from the maker with Thingiverse and I've added some text to it. And I colored that in. It's a small gearbox. And I added the text with Autodesk. It's quite easy. Also, I made an iPhone case. And on the back, there's a name engraved. That's, and also the word iPhone. So that's quite nice. I know already tested it, fits perfectly. Only thing, it didn't turn out very perfectly on this side. But maybe I should have printed an iPhone case without uh, this uh, plastic covering here, or I should have enabled the supports on uh, the printer. It was printed like so, and of course I printed it with a raft, because otherwise this thing would just fall over. And now I'm going to show you the three models and also when this is done. And this is what it looks like inside of the computer. There's the power supply, hard disk, graphics card, RAM, CPU, and the coder, of course. And on the bottom there just lays the motherboard. And it's a bit... Well, <laughs> it's not the best way to mount the board, but um, I didn't have the possibility to screw it in. And I'm only using one SATA port, and of course all PCI ports on the bottom there. Um, are covered by the hard disk because there was no other way of fitting the hard disk in there. Of course I could have used an SSD or a smaller one but I didn't have one. And yeah. Well it has a capacity of 250 kilo kilobytes which for music well I think that's more than enough. Of course you can always expand it. And on the back just have the center panel there with all the connectors. Those old keyboard connector serial parallel. There's a Bluetooth adapter, network interface, audio out, microphone in, and here's the Wi Fi antenna, that's Wi Fi module, DVI out, S video out, and VGA out. And here on this side, we just have a standard input, runs on 230 volts only. And before you could switch uh, between the two voltages, as you can see it still has got the old sticker. But this is now just the main power switch, meaning if in this position no voltage will go into the power supply, and if it's like that, of course, the voltage 
I know you can go into the power supply and it will switch on. Now, the difficult part was uh, connecting the entire thing to ground, so what I just did, here's my ground wire going to the ground pin there, and that just connects to the negative terminals on the power supply, because of course in every computer the negative terminal is connected to ground, so yeah, even the power supply is now connected to ground and everything is, is secured. And of course I have um, added this uh, plastic here on the sides and the bottom on all sides of the power supply so there's no chance of voltage getting anywhere where it's not supposed to go. And I've also kept the old uh, warning labels in there. Of course everything is fused, down there is the fuse and so on. And this is just the only power supply. It's one of these uh, cheap LC power supplies. That's actually the original plan from it, which claimed to go to 500 watts. But I would highly recommend to anyone do not use a power supply. That's so cheap. Quite cheap, 500 watts. Uh, I have actually no idea how much this uh, entire computer uses, but I think it's about uh, 200 or so or less. There's the voltage regulator, two fans. I've already installed one of the uh, covers. There, as you can see, it looks really nice. A lot better than it did before when it was open. The other panel is just finished, I'm just letting it uh, cool down. And, uh, yeah. So now I'm just going to install the second panel and I'll be back in a second. Of course I could have done a lot better with the cable management, but uh, this is the best I can do in a case this small. And here's the second part. That has fan speed, of course, referring to that button again. That's gonna go on there. Let's see if I can do that. Just checking if it fits. And it does, it fits absolutely perfectly, you've just got to glue it in place. And yeah, that's actually all. And I've put everything back in my stereo set. Looks very nice. And uh, I'm going to power it up now. I've got a display here that's hooked up to the computer. I will use other one, which is a lot smaller because this one takes not space actually. Oops, I'm gonna switch it on. And there we go. And to control this, I'm just using a Re Mini Bluetooth keyboard, which is uh, actually one of the best Bluetooth keyboards I've ever used. Okay, it's booting now. It should just connect to the keyboard by itself. Of course, that's gonna take a while. There we go, it's running Ubuntu, Ubuntu 14.04. Here in the back, there are some indicator lights for power and hard disk drive. That LED there is just showing that the user is switched on. And there we are. I'm just going to play something that uh, I've got from a YouTube audio library, so the video won't get removed. And there we go. The only thing I might have to do is calibrate the view meter because it shows a little bit too much. Play next.
our device looks great. One thing I'm going to do is maybe print a small logo and put it on here, but I'm going to use a different color uh, filament for that. So, yeah. Bye.